Well, hello again, ladies and gentlemen. It is I, the Jabbering Magpie, playing as Mags for Rigor with Tamnus, his little Doberman. So, let us look for missions. As, uh, it's been getting a bit talky recently, and uh, I know how people don't like that. So, check me in box. What do we have? RE, thanks. Alexander to Mags. Hey Mags, Uncle Dietrich told me I could message you here, so I figured that I should. He's probably told you that I'm living at Samuel's, huh? Or that mu That's where I am? It's different? I'll give it that much. I like that. I don't get pressure to hurt people here, so that's good and nobody smacks me around. Even though I can tell that a lot of the, uh, tro of the trog, uh, the orcs and the trolls want to. I do get yelled at a lot and called a lot of names, but I guess that that's making me feel bad about the kind of thing is all part of the plan. Life kind of sucks right now, but at least nobody's going to make me kill anyone. Uncle D says that it's going to get better, and maybe it will. I don't know. Anyway, what I wa mostly want to say is thank you for not killing me back at the humanist compound. I had a gun on you, and you totally could have, but you didn't. And I'm really glad about that. Thanks, Alexander. Ah, No problem, boy. How much money do we have in the Alice Fund? 21,250. Access to Shadowlands BBS. Any pay data? Do we make any? Oh, humanist safe house list. 460 new yen was my winning bid. That sucks. Shadowlands BBS. Relevant keywords. Nothing. Open the jobs directory then. Pending and active jobs. Mark 6 prototype extraction. Mags, here you will find a complete transcript of my conversation with Herr Schmidt, potential client. As you'll see the details of what. Oh, we've already read this one, haven't we? Yeah, we've read this. They basically want us to go steal this thing. Accept the job. To uh, steal a prototype. And we go. So we need to take the U-Bahn to AG Chemi Europa. Okay, for this team, I think probably Blitz, Glory, uh, Blitz, Glory, I don't know whether or not to take Iger. There's probably going to be really fucking heavy security. Assemble a team to go extract the Mark VI. Okay, so your decking's five, my decking's four, so we will take Blitz, um, Iger, and Glory. So we've got some pretty heavy co Pretty heavy combat line set up. Tumnus on support. I can do a little bit. Okay. Mark 6. Monolithic. Plastic. Sterile. Berlin office of AG Chemi Europa is all of these things and more. The worst qualities of modern corporate culture. All mixed into a toxic stew and sluiced into a single prefab office building. Thankfully you shouldn't have to stay long. According to the intel that your client provided this should be a simple smash and grab operation. And you've been given tools to carry out with minimum fuss. Mark 6 prototype, whatever it is, is waiting for you on the 25th floor. It's time to go and get in. Uh, simple drone repair kit. And an advanced medic kit. Okay, I hope that's enough. Satellite administration complex, after hours. Let's 
let's check the area. Medical supplies. Send this item to my stash. These crates have been sealed. The only visible markings are Project Atlas. Okay, let's have another look around, see if anything pops up for uh, general theft purposes. Nope. Building appears to be clean. Maintenance console. Few minutes, mo few moments of sifting through cables, you find a diagnostic connector with the right input to fit the little black box that Herr Schmidt gave you. Plug in the little black box. The connector slips into a box with a satisfying click. Tiny red light sent the box's lid begins flashing. After a few seconds, it turns solid to yellow, then finally shifts to green. At that instant, all of the lights in the garage turn off. A few seconds later, the emergency lighting kicks in. If what Schmidt told you was true, you've just kill killed the main power for most of the building. In theory, the box also circumnavigated the security cameras on the building's upper floors. You should be able to intercept the camera feeds by tapping into the elevator console on the 24th floor. Handy little thing. Alright, let's go. Oh, I forgot about... Blitz has got a drone as well. Oh, it's called Max. Without warning, your comlink screen bursts into static. You hear a telltale series of clicks. Someone has established an audio connection to your comlink. A moment later, your deep, sonorous voice speaks into your ear. You recognise it instantly. Your lodge contact, Luca Dwyer. Max, do not speak, just listen. I have a proposition for you. I understand that your team is currently en route to retrieve a package, the Mark 6 prototype, if I'm not mistaken. My associates and I are interested in acquiring the Mark VI for our own studies. We would like you to deliver it, to deliver the device to us. Once you've acquired the Mark VI, you will proceed back to the garage as planned. There will be a, f there you'll find a transport parked beside your client's van. Load the Mark VI onto the transports, and you will be rewarded. Herr Schmidt will also be dealt with to protect you from reprisal. To accept our offer, simply proceed to as instructed and return the prototype to us. Please note that we will need the Mark VI in, in damaged condition. It is not in full working order, it is useless to us. As you know, our organization takes good care of its friends. It will be an advantage to you to help us. Good day. Say nothing. Okay, uh, let's just help the fucking Illuminati then. I go into indicate a console built in for warp size the elevator. This looks like the elevator console. The camera feed should be routed here. It only takes a moment to connect your PDA, and immediately the visual feeds from all over the building begins to flood in. Alright, now let's find a way upstairs. Okay, so we can see what's knocking about, any guards, there's a chap over here. Big room of security. What's this sign say? Data store and records? There's going to be something good in here. Records terminal. Search archive. Ah, uh, employee records. In fact, Schmidt. Nope. Okay, let's try. Down here, then. Containment detector. Toxic gas detected. Laboratory lockdown engaged. Laboratory entrance. Okay, so we need to find a way of flushing 
this lab of containers. What's this? Warning lights droves out for console at your approach. Large white letters shriek out against a red background. Warning, toxic gas containment detected, COC12 phosphine gas. Hazardous material override engaged, laboratory entrance locked down. Access substance library. Connection failed. Purge laboratory air. Go back. Introduce a gaseous agent. Access substance. Use direct access in data store. Connection failed. COC12. Okay, so we need to find COC12. What counteracts COC12? And then hopefully. Fill the building with that. COC12. Common known as phosine gas, a highly toxic colorless gas that gained infamy for its use as a chemical weapon during the First World War. It's also valued as an industrial reagent, as a building block for which pharmaceuticals and other organic compounds can be synthesized. In low concentration, its odor is reminiscent of freshly cut gla gla uh, grass. The odor detection threshold for phosine is 0 0.4 ppm, four times its threshold limit value. Phosine related deaths are generally caused by interaction with gas with proteins of the pulmonary alveoli. The end result of this interaction is destruction of blood air barrier, preventing transmission of oxygen to blood. Death by suffocation event inevitably follows. Yeah, it completely and utterly fucks your lungs. I do believe you end up choking to death slightly on your own coagulated blood. It's highly recommended that any employees working around this area wear detector badges. A suitable supply of NaHCO3 sodium bicarbonate for liquid phosine and NH3 ammonia for gaseous phosine must be kept on hand to neutralize spills and leakages. NH3, that's what we want. So we pump this room full of NH3, that should counteract the phosine gas. And, uh, yeah. Introduce gaseous agent NH3. Introducing ammonia gas to the laboratory area. Disengage lock. No containments. Open. How are we doing on the old karma? Body? Scientist lays dead behind a small pile of smashed glass and a number of beakers have been knocked over from a nearby table. Yeah, he's not gonna be whistling Dixie anytime soon. Combat stim, send it to my stash. Oh, I can always sell fucking things. Another med pack, send it to the stash. A note. On the counter is a note, carefully transcribed in neat handwriting with paper bears, letterhead of senior ex executive Lennart Stromberg. I'm still waiting for that report, so when I say ice up, I mean I need it yesterday. Stay until you've completed the test, then leave the report on my desk. The door code is 54319. 54139. Do this tonight, I'll expect to see it waiting for me when I arrive tomorrow. Stromberg. Terminale. Computer's powered on, but in sleep mode. When it screen comes to life, you find a half written text file on the screen. The timestamp of the most recent edit tells you it was written just a few minutes ago. I didn't sleep last night. Doesn't like I'm going to sleep tonight either. The last test batch failed. My fault. I got the mixture, mixture wrong. Sloppy work, Jensen. Can barely keep my eyes open. Got to try again, though. No excuses in this office. I despise relying on stimulants, but I've got no choice. Got to keep going. Mar progress marches on. Starting a new batch. If Househoffer's pet isn't ready to be tested tomorrow, well, best not think about it. Got to concentrate. Remember lab safety. Keep alert. Keep awake. 
One wrong move could spell disaster. Okay. Read yesterday's entry. A week. He waits an entire week before telling me when that tailing the mixture is an unacceptable solution. And then he tells me about the trials that have begun tomorrow. I have no time. Giesbrecht's supplying so much pressure I can barely think. Bastard. Househoff is probably threatening him. All of them can rot. Maybe now that Househoff is playing that heart and sheets with Gle Giesbrecht's secretary. Playing heat the sheets with Giesbrecht's se secretary will learn to ha lighten up. I can only hope. Anyway, I have some new ideas to move forward with formula. Admittedly far-fetched, possibly even dangerous, but if I don't start producing some results, I got the feeling I won't, won't be my problem for much longer. Wish me luck, journal. It's science time. Last week's journal. Tailoring doses to individual patients has worked wonders. The key was taking a gene therapy-based approach. They've been using it in medicine for ages, so why not apply the same logic here? So in a nutshell, I've used the subject's own DNA to delude their immune systems into believing that Formula 17 belongs in the body, simple and effective. The approach has helped increase the formula's absorption weight, as well as significantly reducing incidences of rejection. Fortunately, it also rules out an easily mass-produced product, but I'm convinced that the results will justify additional costs. Old entry. New formula arrived today. Formula 17. I swear whoever names these things has no imagination at all. Formula 17. Honestly. Still, I can't wait to work and start working on it. From what I've read, the early clinical trials were promising in the extreme. Amazingly potent, this stuff. An increased potency means less frequent injections at a lower dosage. There's nothing not like it. Despite my enthusiasm, there is still much to be done. Speeding up absorption rates is the first on the list, and I have some concerns regarding the subject's immune reactions. Perhaps the formula could be tailored on a patient-to-patient -patient basis. Okay, so it's some kind of drug or stimulant to, to be administered to uh, patients. They can't get it working without their fucking immune systems going gats and killing the patients, so he's had to tailor, use gene therapy. However, that didn't, they didn't like that, so he's worked through all the night and spilt all his dirty, dirty containers. Building maintenance. Medical supplies. Chipper stash. this? Werner Hardegger, junior executive. Oh, what's in your bar? On the bar are a number of bottles of alcohol. Most of them look expensive. Uh, I don't have social light. I could, I could grab a bottle for a road. I could probably bribe somebody with that, but it's not going to work now. Terminal! Guys, get out of my way so I can use this terminal. First terminal appears to be unremarkable. It's password locked and a cheerful screensaver marches across the display. Inspect! Upon the closer inspection, you notice something interspersed among colourful balanced and sprites of a screensaver. There is a symbol that you recognise the dead drop marker of the shock and villain writer. As you study the display, a green light winks on above the terminals display for recording light of a pinhole camera. The screensaver disappears, the screen floods with glowing green text. Shock and Velen Writer contributor 1432 recognised. Welcome, Mags. Secret project. This is an open request for information about the projects and materials prototypes being developed at this facility. It is known that there is a synthetic drug is being developed here in support of a project called Atlas. In addition, a functioning functional prototype called Mark 6 has been developed. The first contribution to provide us with a project data for Atlas for chemical foil for new drug and visual records for Mark VI in operation will be handsomely rewarded. All three pieces of information are required for payout. AG Chemi Europa is known for its heartless cooperation with little regard for meta-human safety and morality. They guard our secrets jealously to seek and seek to hoard all information gained for themselves. This behaviour cannot allow be allowed to go unpunished. What they know, all shall know. No longer will they hide the secrets in the shadows. The timely delivery of this information will be well rewarded. Freedom, equality, information. Shock and Velen writer. 
Okay, they want shock and villain writer wants info. Five four four one three nine. Four one three nine. Code accepted, door unlocked. <laughs> Search the desk. Stack of business cards on this desk reveals it belongs to Annika Schroeder. A cursory search reveals desk drawers of stuff full of lewd love notes and hastily written on scraps of office stationery. Rummage through the notes. Exploring Annika's desk is like an embarking on an odyssey of filth. Ooh, lovely. 30 seconds in, and you've learned that three new euphemisms for sex in a storage closet, as well as an exciting new definition for a variety of common office terms. Thankfully, you also turn up something of a more immediate nature. Immediate value, a scrap of paper with a name and a five-digit code scribbled on it. House offer. 54792J. Oop, sorry about that one, folks. Let's just check my phone for a second. Wonderful! Another fucking tube strike. Just what I love about London town. Assholes. Search desk. Project Atlas folder. Open it. Folder is empty except for a single note. Move to digital archive locked under executive authorization. So. The digital archive. Is not this, it's this. Project Atlas. Bingo. Let me see. Eight four seven nine two. Bingo. Welcome, how Herr Haushofer. Volumes of information begin to flit across the street screen, a good half of what you're seeing has been redacted and the rest is written in impossibly dense corp speak. Access to visual record. Authorization required. Do you wish to proceed? Cancel. Go back. Download project data to your PDA for Shock and Bell and Writer. Right. We're going to need better goddamn hacking. Or another Formula 17. Let's see if this chap's code will work. 84792. Bingo. Formula 17 appears to be a drug designed to suppress higher brain functions, specifically those functions related to emotional responses and decision making skills. From what you can tell, the overall purpose of the drug is to render a sub subject submissive and pliant. The note goes on to suggest that Formula 17 was developed to be as a component for a large project called Atlas. Bollocks, and that was my girlfriend calling me about the tube strike. Oh. <laughs> Sorry about that, folks. Anyway, back on. Apparently, Project Atlas has something to do with cybernetic augmentation. Formula 17 was developed to help reduce the incidences of rejection in Project Atlas's test subjects. Recent trials of the formula have been extremely encouraging, while initially a serious concern, fatalities have recently dropped off to a statistically insignificant level. The document is accompanied by a fairly extensive record of testing performed on metahuman subjects along with death records over the course of the project. The Shock and Velen writer will be interested in all this information according to the Charter. Sharing this information with the world would be a top priority. In the wrong hands, however, this formula could cause immense harm. We will send it to the Shock and Velen writer. Okay, what else do we have? Project data, we need the visual records. Um, 
Let me see. Stromberg. Oh god, not again. Phone's going off once more. Jesus, fuck I'm popular today. Right. God in heaven. Um, what was that chap's name? His name was... Stromberg. Stromberg. Lennart Stromberg. From Hamburg. PhDs. So, eight four, that's Haushofer. Oh fuck, I can't remember his name. We'll go Anika. Schroeder. No, Schroeder. Executive Secretary to Executive Stromberg. Okay, well, fuck it. Let's see if Atlas will let me through with the correct. 84792 Haushofer Oh, it lets me through. Welcome Act authorization accepted. Following details Laboratory on Metahumans. Images of extensive series of cyber surgeries being performed upon a large troll recording of the same troll carving his way through opponents with a massive axe and gun cam footage from what appears to be a vehicle mounted chain gun. The weapon has been photographed tearing apart a variety of targets both artificial and organic. Visual records. Could this have anything to do with the really really chromed up troll that was knocking about? You know, like severe cyber surgery. No, it's still in like a prototyping phase. Okay, we got all the stuff for the Shock and Velen writer. Search your desk. That's just a digital archive. Message. Alright. Security chaps here. One, two, three, four, five in total. Okay, let's check this sign. Security room. Right, fuck it, let's avoid security. That's a firefight we don't need to get into. Authorization required for access to the executive elevator. 84792. Bingo! And we're up. The elevator whisks you upwards towards the executive level 25th floor. As expected, the run has been relatively smooth sailing so far. Chime breaks the silence as the elevator grinds to a stop. Mark 6 is somewhere on this floor, and all you need to do is find it. 
Alright, we need the fucking thing in one piece. And I have no access to any of the cameras or anything. The emergency light winks out, leaving you in darkness. A moment later, the building lights flip, lights flip on, cranking all the way to full illumination. The light is uncomfortably bright. A quick check of your comlink shows your security feed has been terminated. Instead of command view 24th floor, you find yourself staring at a blank screen. Well, that can't be good. Alright, I think this will be a good place to leave it for now, as I don't actually know how long I've been recording for, due to I had like a million fucking phone calls right now. Anyway, I do hope you enjoyed this, ladies and gentlemen, and catch us next time, where we will be uh, trying to steal the Mark VI prototype. Tatty bye for now!